In this video I'll share 12 steps for making your puppy pee and poop outdoors as this is your main end goal in potty training your puppy. These 12 steps are perfectly suited for 8 week old puppies. These 12 steps come directly from my first book and that's How to House Train Your Puppy The Ultimate Guide which I wrote in cooperation with 24 dog trainers and dog experts. Hi, my name is Robin and I'm the owner of the website puppybee.com and I'm here to help you prepare for your puppy in the best way possible so you know what to do and what to expect when you get a puppy. Besides my book How to House Train Your Puppy The Ultimate Guide I've written three other puppy training books and I've written these four books in cooperation with over 30 professional well-known dog trainers. And again these 12 steps I'm going to share with you in this video come directly from my book How to House Train Your Puppy The Ultimate Guide. Firstly it is important to make it very clear, when you walk your puppy, I distinguish between taking an actual walk and only taking it for a pee and poop. You walk your dog four times a day, whereas you could be taking it for a pee and poop for as many as 14 times a day, walks included. So again, this is a very big difference between walking your puppy and only taking it for a pee and poop because you absolutely do not want to take real walks every time you go out as 8 week old puppies are not allowed to take that many walks. More on this in step 5 of these 12 steps I'm going to share with you right now for potty training your 8 week old puppy. The first step in potty training your 8 week old puppy. Over the first few days or weeks lift your pup up when you take it outside for a walk. Young pups find it especially hard to resist the urge to pee right away, increasing their chances of peeing as they head for the front door. Lifting it up will activate a mechanism that blocks the urinary tract. Step 2. Step 2 involves directing your pup to the place where it's allowed to relieve itself. Ideally this should be the dullest place you can think of, close to your house. Why dull you wonder? You want your pup to get bored and relax, making it realize that it needs to pee and poop. Any place in your immediate surroundings that provides minimum distractions will do. During this first week use the same boring spot as often as you can to teach the pup where it can and should answer nature's call. Repeatedly visiting the same spot make it even more boring for your puppy, causing it to switch attention to peeing sooner. If you notice that it's working out nicely, you can start looking for a second airing space. Try to find more and more different airing spots to teach your pup to relieve itself in different places. On the grass, in the sand, on gravel and even on the pavement if you're living in an urban area without a spot of green nearby. Step 3. Now wait for 5 minutes at maximum to give your pup the time it needs to pee or poop. Step 4. After a successful pee or poop you should praise it with kind words and a nice treat or a game. On a side note, if you're taking your pup for a real walk proceed to step 5 for further instructions on that. If you're only letting it pee and poop you can hop over to step 8 if your pup hasn't peed yet. Has it peed already and are you not planning to walk it any further? Then you can go right back home together. You can skip steps 5 through 12 for that particular moment. Maybe a few hours later when it needs to go again and it didn't pee already you can go on with step 5 or hop over to step 8 if you're not taking an actual walk with your puppy. Step 5 Start your walk even if your pup hasn't relieved itself after 5 minutes. Take your pup age into account. As I said in the beginning of this video, puppies are not allowed to walk for long distances or for many walks each day. As a rule of thumb, you can add 5 minutes of walking for every month the pup is old. If it is 2 months old, for example, you can walk it for 10 minutes. The assumption here is 4 walks a day. As indicated earlier, of course, it's fine to take your pup out much more often for a pee and poop, but this stands apart from your walks. So just to be sure, if your puppy is 12 weeks old or 3 months, it can walk for 50 minutes in one go at maximum. 
The reason you shouldn't walk any longer than that is to strain your putting on the pup's joints. If you don't stick to this rule of thumb, you run the risk of your puppy developing hip dysplasia. For larger dog breeds, sticking to this rule is especially crucial. Step 6. As you're walking, give your puppy plenty of time and space to pee and poop, even if it has already done so at the start of your walk. Keep a close eye on your pup so that you know whether it managed to do what you came for. Keep track of the quantities of pee and poop as well, because peeing for one second and then getting distracted will not result in an empty bladder. Many people make the mistake only to see their pup pee in the house the minute they return home, wondering what went wrong. Step 7. If no peeing and pooping have happened by the end of your walk, simply return to that familiar boring spot and wait there for another 5 minutes. Even if it did pee or poop already, you would be offering your puppy a chance to do so again at the end of the walk. On a side note, steps 8 to 12 only apply if your pup didn't pee at all during your walk. If it has peed already, return home together and you can skip steps 8 through 12. Ok, step 8. If it does not pee on its airing spot within 5 minutes, simply go back home. Lift up your pup and walk home. Then direct it to its dog crate and close the door, preventing it from walking around in the living room. The reason to put the pup back in the dog crate is puppy's tendency not to spoil its own sleeping space easily. Keep in mind though that exceptions do occur. If you do not use a dog crate or if your pup is not used to a dog crate yet, you can also hold your puppy on your lap and just enjoy your time together or watch some television while waiting 10 minutes before continuing to step 9. And on a side note, if you want to learn more about crate training your puppy, please see my other YouTube video on crate training where I'll give you 6 tips for crate training your puppy so your puppy will see his crate as its safe haven and he stops or not even begins squealing and barking inside the dog crate. Our goal here is of course that you can leave your pup home alone in his dog crate so he won't destroy your living room. Please see a link to that video in the description below this video. Ok, let's continue with step 9. Step 9. 10 minutes later, you take it out of its dog crate again. Carry the pup outside on your arm, take it to the same airing spot and give it some time to sniff around. Hopefully it will pee now and perhaps even poop as well. Step 10. Did your puppy pee? Be sure to praise it with kind words and a nice treat or a fun game. Now you can take your pup home straight away. You can skip the next steps. If your puppy still hasn't peed yet, please continue to the next step and that's step 11. Step 11. Of course, you may find that nothing happens once again. Your puppy may get distracted by a butterfly or passing traffic anything really. Still, you know that its last pee was a good while back so it can't be long now. That's why you should lift your puppy up again and take it back inside, putting in its dog crate and closing the door. Keep an eye on your pup to make sure it doesn't wet its dog crates. And again, if your puppy does not like dog crates yet, please see my other YouTube video on crate training your puppy. For the time being, you can just hold your puppy on your lap. 10 minutes later, take your pup back out and start it over again. Don't forget to reward it generously with kind words and perhaps a tasty treat after it finally answers nature's call outside. The last step, step 12, keep repeating this process until you have reached your goal. Your puppy pees outside. And make sure don't make the mistake of playing with your puppy indoors because you know that will prompt it to pee. Just calmly direct it to his dog crate. Close the door and wait. On a side note, let's be clear about this. Of course you don't need to go back inside after 5 minutes every time. Staying out is fine. In fact, it's even better because you avoid the risk of your pup wetting the dog crate. If you decide to wait outside until it pees, it's important to keep in mind that you can only walk your puppy for a few minutes at a time. So don't go for a 30 minute walk because you think it has to pee outside at some point. Having your puppy run all over the place all the time isn't okay either. Stand still or pick it up on your arm. Put it in a carrier bag or a cart and offer another opportunity to pee a few minutes later. And you're probably thinking along the lines of That is going to take a lot of time, isn't it? Well, to be frank, yes. Getting an 8-week-old puppy house trained 
takes a lot of time and effort. Over the first few days and weeks, it's essential for you to be there for your puppy, giving it all the time it needs to calmly answer nature's call. Always keep in mind that all of this is completely new and very exciting for your puppy. Well, there you have it, my 12 steps on potty training your 8-week-old puppy. If you would like to know when and how often you should go about following these 12 steps, please download my puppy schedule for free. You can find a link to that puppy schedule in the description below this video on YouTube. This puppy schedule has been downloaded for thousands of times already by my Dutch audience, as I have a similar YouTube channel and website in the Netherlands where I also help new puppy owners. I would very much love to know your thoughts on these 12 steps. Is it working for you? Do you have any questions regarding potty training your puppy? Please leave your questions in the comments below and I promise you I answer all of them. As I just started this YouTube channel and I have only 7 subscribers, you will have my 100% attention. So please leave a comment below and hit me up with all of your questions. I promise to answer all of them. Also, please click that like button if you find this video of any value to you. If you didn't find any value in this video, then please let me know as well. I would like to know whether or not I'm doing a good job here. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the big red subscribe button so you won't miss my next video next Thursday. Every Thursday there's a new video related to puppy training. Also please visit my website puppybee.com for more information about puppy training. I wish you all the best with your puppy and make sure you enjoy every single moment. Thanks for watching my video and I'll see you next time.